Hi everybody, I'm Federico and today I'm going to talk about how to install Puma. So Puma is, is a NASA software and I'm currently on the NASA GitHub page where you can find most of the information about the software, how to install it, etc. So I, I just want to briefly mention that this is not the only repository where you can find information on. There is also a GitLab development repository where you can find the most recent updates to the software but so for a normal user i would recommend going just on the nasa github page and where you can run the installation for the latest release so for puma we rely heavily on conda packages and anaconda is basically a packaging system that allows you to distribute software easily and this is not only applicable to python packages but uh, it's also for for hybrid softwares like puma for example it's it, it has both a component that is uh, written in c plus plus and the other component the the most recent addition uh, is puma pi which is written in python so uh, if you run, if we run this uh, command conda create, uh, this is gonna basically create a, a, a conda environment, and in this in this case, I'm, I'm just gonna call it Puma tutorial for the conda environment, and then on the right we have the software name which is pulled from a conda channel called Conda Forge. So basically, Anaconda works by channels where um, which are basically repositories of software which have been packaged up in different ways and Conda Forge is the community um, it's one of the biggest channels on Anaconda Cloud and it's a big community so we have gone through the whole process of approval for Conda Forge and Puma is currently on their channel so this is going through the installation of all the dependencies of Puma inside the Conda environment that we've created. And it's basically checking that everything can be installed on your specific system. Once this is completed, uh, we'll, uh, as it has just finished, uh, we're going to be able to Conda activate the environment. And as you can see on the left hand side of, uh, of my name, this has popped up as, as the uh, environment that is currently active and so if we now run for example python and we import puma pi uh, the very first time that you run this command it's gonna take a few seconds to compile and install some of the python code and so once this is completed as, as it just did we're gonna be able to run puma pi dot for example workspace and we can if we hit tab it auto completes so we have access to to the classes and functions uh, of puma pi so i'm just gonna exit out of, of python and uh, in this case i'm gonna run the the puma gui instead and so as you can see now i i also auto completed that it, it knows the the name automatically because we are inside the the conda environment in which we have installed puma so if we run this, it's going to open up a GUI and um, which is talking directly to both the, the, the C++ functions as well as some of the Python code. And so uh, just to give you an example, and I'm going to go through more in detail later about this, these capabilities, I've just created a, a fiber domain, which is um, 100 cubed, and now I'm going to render it using the 3d render function and this is uh, no worries if uh, if you don't know what i'm what i'm doing currently i'm gonna go through more in detail later this is just an example to to show you that the software is currently running so i'm gonna just close everything and then next i'm gonna talk about a couple of more ways of installing puma so the one that you've just seen uh, to create both an environment and installing that environment Puma is the recommended way through the conda command. Another way that we have also packaged up Puma is using pip. So pip is basically the, another packaging system that only works for uh, Python packages. So by running pip install Puma Pi, uh, it's going to basically install uh, only the, the left hand side of this uh, diagram for the software architecture which is basically only the python package and so as a side note 
these two commands run different things on Unix, so both Linux and Mac. So the first one installs everything, uh, every component of Puma, both the C++ GUI and the, the Python package. And whereas pip install Puma Pi only installs the Python package. On Windows, it works slightly differently. And so both uh, commands um, only install the Python package. So for the purpose of this tutorial, I, I, would, I want to also introduce how uh, somebody that would like to modify the, the source code would go about and do that. So basically um, what I recommend, so for a normal user, I recommend using the conda command that I've just gone through. So for somebody that would like to make changes to the source code or in general have access to the source code, my recommendation is to go on the Puma dev GitLab repository and git cloning, basically copying the URL that is in here. And uh, I'll go on a new um, terminal tab and uh, I'm gonna type git clone and then the URL that I copied. This basically just downloads the, the code on or wherever folder you are there. And so now I'm gonna CD inside Puma dev and here is basically where we're gonna start working inside this folder. So I'm not gonna go into the details of the source code in this video tutorial because I'm gonna cover this in the next section. But what I wanted to reference is if you go inside the readme, there are three different uh, links that you can follow and references. The, one of the most important ones is the first one called docs. And so uh, this one, takes you to the Puma documentation. So we spend quite a lot of effort into documenting uh, every single function inside Puma, very thoroughly for Python and a little less for C++. But as you can see, like if we go function by function, we also added an example of, uh, of how, to, how to run it. And so uh, the other two links that are here uh, take you to both the, the two packaging systems that I that I mentioned earlier for Anaconda Cloud. Here it gives you basically another conda install command that you can run. Although I recommend using the one that I added to the readme, which also creates an encapsulated environment. And the, the other one is here for Puma Pi on PyPy. So um, a last note that I wanted to mention is that as you can see from, from these uh, links, as well as on the GitHub, um, we have the different versions for, for Puma, uh, basically are um, in, under this releases section. So um, if I click on here, I, I just wanted to show you, the, we are currently on version 3.0, which is the one that, that has been approved for being open source. And so since it was released um, if in August, um, we have already released, uh, made a few other releases. Um, we're currently at 3.1.6. And so every time that we, ha we have uh, made a, a big enough change that warrants it a new release, we basically just bump the version and all the packages get automatically uh, rebuilt on both PyPy and Anaconda Cloud. So in order to always be up to date and be running the latest version, you can go back to the, to the main readme. And unless you haven't made changes to the source code itself, you can just basically remove the, the conda environment by running this, this command. And the name has to match whatever name of the environment you gave. And then uh, you can rerun the, the conda create with the Puma package attached to it so that it basically downloads the latest release. So this is the end of this tutorial video. I'm gonna talk more about how to set up a project and get started with running Puma in the next one. Thank you.